Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Tom. How are you? Okay, can you hear me okay? You're sounding a little low to me. Okay, all right, that's what I thought. Oh, no, okay, I, I do hear you well. You, you, you are great. great. It, it was, was my problem. problem. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm okay? Yes, yes sir. So you're okay. Some distance. I do. Let me fix the music a little bit. I bet that'll help. Here we go. How's that? A little better? Am, am I okay? Yes. You should, You're you good. Sure? Okay. I'm good. Everybody's good. That's I'm good. okay. You're okay. Oh. Everybody's okay. Okay. My oh, okay. I, <laughs> so I can hear you guys. Oh, there we are. That, that helps I'm too. Still here. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Today, today's lesson is 175, and it is a summary lesson of 159 and 160. 159 was, I give the miracles I have received. Number 160 is, I am at home. Fear is the stranger here and looks like we're all good to go so off to the races today 175 uh, uh, lesson 175 is i give the miracles i've received god is but love and therefore so am i Oh, it's, yeah, whoops, it should be that. That's all right. I can fix it later. Okay. All right. I am at home. Fear is a stranger here. God is but love, and therefore so am I. And that is our encapsulating idea to keep around our beautiful thoughts. God is but love, therefore so am I. So today we review as we are doing for a 10-day little grouping of review lessons. We begin and end every lesson with the theme behind the review. God is but love, and therefore so am I. The central idea from 159 is I give the miracles that I have received. Consider how this lesson clarifies and enhances the theme that God is but love, and therefore, so am I. Remember to end your session by repeating the general lesson. That's what I just said. God is but love, and so am I. 160 again. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. How does that clarify and enhance the theme that God is but love, and so am I. I'm going to delve into the notes on 160 to get into that. Remember to end your session by repeating the general theme that God is but love, and therefore, so am I. Throughout your day, remember the words, but go beyond the words. Share the experience of being that love, and you will create a great day for yourself and the world. And that is the lesson. Now I'm going to read some detail from lesson 160, that second lesson here. I'm at home. Fear is the stranger here. These are notes from Tom's book, Understanding A Course in Miracles Workbook Lessons. Kind of help us get deeper into A Course in Miracles. I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. Do you live in a peaceful world or is your world full of fears? Love has no opposites. Fear is a stranger to love. When you identify with fear, you've imagined the loss of your true identity and have denied the truth of who you really are. Your decision maker has forgotten 
that truth is true and nothing else is. You have become split-minded and allowed fear to enter into a world of your mind's imagination. Fear is unknown in the shared mind of God. By making the false appear real, you have allowed the thought system of fear to masquerade as the ruler of your world. Your decision maker has chose to, chosen to deny your own birthright. Your mind has been made sick with fear and now has become an alien to the truth. God did not create fear. God's creations complete God himself and are only an extension of love. Love has no opposites. Fear and love cannot coexist. A fearful world cannot be the home that God prepared for his beloved creation. If you perceive a fearful world, it's a world that only exists within your mind's imagination. Your split mind has imagined lack, limitation, and separation to exist. These beliefs have birthed a false world that is the home of the little s self that you imagine yourself to be. This is the home for the sin, guilt, and fear that your ego perceives to be real. But only love is real and is complete in itself. For love is the oneness of all that is. Fear, which would have to be defined as love's opposite, cannot be real. Fear is false, evidence of hearing real. F-E-A-R. Fear does not complete love and can only appear real within the imaginings of a delusional mind. If you're real, fear must be an illusion. If fear is real, you do not exist at all. If your life is full of fear, then you've denied the truth of your big S self. You have forgotten that you're the writer, director, and star of your dream world of perception. You have invited an alien thought system to enter your mind, and now that thought system rules in place of the truth. When you believe that lack, limitation, and separation are possible, you've forgotten your divine birthright. You've turned the exciting game of what am I into the bad dream of separation that you make real. Differentiation does not mean different. <clears throat> different means that there exist separate and autonomous being. Differentiation only allows for various aspects of the oneself to experience an aspect of itself. When we mistook the game board of differentiation to be interpreted as differences, we allowed a stranger to enter our mind. The stranger is the ego's fear-based thought system of separation. You have forgotten that you are the creator of the game of what am I? You have allowed your mind's imagination to become the arbiter for truth. Your mind now imagines that the false can be true and the true false. But pretense and imagination cannot change the truth 
of who you really are. God, the Holy Spirit, and your big S self all know that you remain the Christ, part of the indivisible one self. God knows the truth, and with knowledge comes certainty. God's certainty guarantees that those who have mistaken the game of what am I to be their reality will reawaken to the truth. Christ sees your fearful ego as the real stranger in the world of truth. Christ knows that fear cannot be real. Christ searches this dream world for what belongs to Christ. The Holy Spirit and Christ can reframe the world you perceive into a witness for that truth if you let them. The Holy Spirit recognizes your higher self to be the true ruler of your mind. When you, as decision maker, decide to follow the thought system of the Holy Spirit, you join with them and allow them to lead you home to the recognition of the truth. Paradise was never lost. God's son and daughter never left their home, but is merely forgotten that their mind sleeps and only needs to awaken. You will not remember your higher self until you see the Christ in all your brothers. To give is to receive when you follow the thought system of love and forgiveness and extend that to all you touch, you recognize the truth of who you really are. Fear will dissipate before the reality of the truth. The mind you share with God is your home. Fear is a stranger here because fear does not exist within the mind of God. And those were Tom's notes from Lesson 160. The question of the day, and then we'll have our meditation. The question of the day is, your world is a reflection of you. The thought system that you follow determines the world you perceive. You can only follow one thought system at any given moment in time. When you follow the ego's thought system, your world is perceived to be a fearful place. So the question is, how fearful is your world? Okay, so today we're going to uh, do a little exercise, and today we're going to heal that split mind. We're going to actually connect it back to our source and heal the uh, illusion that there was something wrong with the circumstances, that there was some blame, shame, guilt associated with it, that someone lacked something, that they were a sinner, that uh, their, the separation was the reality. So I want to give you a couple of thoughts in regards to the lesson. It says that I give the miracles I have received, which was Lesson 159. And Lesson 159 basically says that in order to prove that you have something, you need to give it away. And a miracle is defined various ways in the course, but one of the definitions would just be a change in perception, which is moving from a thought system of fear, in which typically we hold some type of grievance, or we come from the idea of lack, limitation, and separation, and move to the idea of love and forgiveness, where we take on the big picture and we realize that we're a learner, that everybody's a learner, strutting their, playing their roles on this stage of the play school of time and space so that we can demonstrate and hone our skills in becoming love and form. 
And I'd also like to throw out another definition for miracles. And at the big picture level, miracle is a series of interlocking uh, chain of cause and effects that ultimately result in the acceptance of the atonement for yourself. I like to throw out this idea that if at this moment you don't see your world as perfect, in the end, everything is perfect. So if you currently do not see something as perfect, unfolding perfectly for you, you know that it's not the end. The Course said that time is really a sleight of hand, an illusion that we're on a journey of the past going towards the future, that it's linear. It says that actually time is over, the journey is complete, and it's only where we choose to place our attention as to where we seem to appear on this journey that's been completed. So with those thoughts, let's go about and heal that split mind and see the big picture. So get in a comfortable position and just become aware of your breath. And as you do, become aware of energy surrounding you. You can view it as sparkling little shimmers of light. But take in with each breath that energy, that life force, that love. Because life is really the life force. And life is love. And God is only love. So take in that life force and just wherever you perceive your center of your essence to be, just start seeing that energy flowing in, that life force flowing in, and see your light getting brighter and brighter. And realize that we're on this journey that's already over. And where we wish to place our attention, our focus will determine what part of that journey we wish to recall. And today, since we're in healing the split mind, we're going to move through time and arrive at the end of that journey. God is but love, and therefore, so am I. Think of a time when something didn't seem to be perfect when things didn't seem to go your way, when you perceived yourself or others to not be getting everything right as your ego had planned it, as you had thought it should be, where you looked on your world and you said, boy, I didn't get the expected results. There's something wrong with me or my world. It's a time when you chose to listen to the voice of fear, the voice that said you were not perfect, not whole, not complete, that this game board of time and space was your reality and had the ability to change what God had created, perfect, whole, 
and complete. That somehow you lack something and you needed some outside force to perform in some particular way so that you could be happy, so that you could be at inner peace. And as you have that notion, you realize that even at that moment in time, there was another voice, a voice for the Holy Spirit that said, your name called out to you and said, this is not real. This is not the truth of what you are. Do not slip into fear. Do not make the game boy, the illusion of time and space to be your reality. Remember to laugh, to realize that we're all actors and that each play is designed to have various acts so that we as learners can hone our skill and demonstrate being love informed. And realize that at that moment, the play, the role that we were called to play was one of not hearing that voice. But although we thought that there was some blame, shame, or guilt associated with not following that voice, we realize that the Holy Spirit, that higher self, intuitive nature of yourself heard the voice and held that miracle, that change in perception for yourself so that it wasn't lost. It was always available. And as we proceed through time and we learn and hone our skills in becoming love and form, and we proceed from act one to a future time on that timeline that seems to come after that. We now arrive at a place where we hear that miracle, where we hear that voice, and we exchange the thought that we needed, that there was some outside force that could cause us to lose our inner peace. That notion, now we let go, for we realize that I am not a body. I am free. I am still as God created me, perfect, whole, and complete. And nothing can rob me of my own inner peace, unless I choose to allow it. And we realize, as Lesson 159 says, I give the miracles I have received. And hearing that miracle, realizing that you're on your own perfect path, that what unfolded was act one of a many multiple scene chain of events that ultimately result in the acceptance, the reawakening to your true spiritual magnificence. You laugh a little and you realize that your sisters, your brothers, the other actors on that past stage in act one, that there's nothing they did wrong, that you were all on this interlocking chain of seeming cause and effects, which ultimately lead to the atonement, the awakening to the truth of who you are. And since You've received that miracle. 
and to give is to receive. You now give all the players their freedom. You give them that forgiveness, realizing that everything was unfolding on the big picture level perfectly. And that in act one, we just had reached the end. For in the end, everything is perfect. Everything becomes that one. And as you give that forgiveness to the other players, as you drop your grievance for what you mistook to be their misunderstanding of your own ego's plan and the acceptance of the truth of the learning lessons, that interlocking chain of cause and effect was designed to teach all participants, we now realize that it was perfect. It was what we needed. And as we do that, we advance to what we might call Act three, the healing of the split mind, the realization, as Lesson 160 says, I am at home. Fear is the stranger here. Fear is false evidence appearing real. I have always been perfect, whole, and complete, part of that oneness. And as I move into that future, I see the big picture. I look back at the chain of interlocking, seemingly cause and effects that led us to the atonement, the at one the acceptance of the truth that there is only the one self, perfect, whole, and complete. And as we come to that realization that we are home, that fear is the stranger, we realize that we have always had within us the truth of what we really are. We're explorers, adventurers of seekers, individuated aspects of consciousness, participating, willing volunteers, no victims, no victimized, all willing volunteers to come onto this dimension of time and space to hone our skill in demonstrating what love would have me do within a seeming world of opposite, a seeming world of hate and fear, and that we are light. We are a spiritual being striding itself having it acting out in a body with this game told me what love would have me do. And since perfection is our essence, perfect, whole, and complete, part of the oneness of all that is, we realize that everything is perfect. Everything is perfect and in time and space, we have the ability to accept the atonement, the miracle of love and forgiveness and spread that light to our world. The world is a reflection of me. You are light. You are the love of God. 
the theme of these lessons are that God is but love, and therefore so am I. I accept the love of God. I extend the love of God. I accept the truth of what I am. I extend that atonement, that oneness to all my work. Individual aspects of the one self playing on this game board, each filling their role, playing it perfectly in what becomes the miracle, an interlocking chain of apparent cause and effect that ultimately lead to the reawakening to the truth of what you really are, what we all are, God's beloved child with whom she's well pleased, cause and effect, two sides of one inseparable coin. And through you accepting yet one, the atonement for yourself and giving that same miracle to all your world. God knows himself. God is only love and therefore so am. Breathe in that love of God. I extend that love of God to my world. Become aware of that essence and move it back into the game token we call the body. And realize that today in this dimension of time and space, the world of individuated perception, you will continue to hone your skills and demonstrate what love would have you do. You're on your own perfect path. And today you choose to listen to the voice for the Holy Spirit, knowing that no matter what unfolds, the miracle will be held for you and will be available whenever you choose to accept and give that same miracle to your world. You are love. You are God's treasure. As I accept the love of God and extend the love of God, become aware of that game token, the body, and start pumping energy through reactivating, reconnecting to the costume. Have the energy flow down the back of the leg, up the soles of the feet, round the front, through the back, up the spine, over the crown shock, back down the front, back through the back of the leg. And as you reach the sole of the feet, just send the energy bolt back down into this physical form, this earth, and reground yourself in this dimension. But bring that awareness of the truth, of the perfection of the big picture with you and as you re-energize the body decide today to see all things in their truth a miracle is an interlocking chain of cause and effect that ultimately results in the atonement, the acceptance of your divine 
inherit your spiritual essence. And as you see your essence, that light shining brightly, today, extend that brightness and light your world. When you feel comfortable, just take a deep breath, knowing that you are God's treasure. You are my treasure. Your world is your treasure that you get to light with your love. The God in me sees the God in you. Namaste. Create a great day for yourself and your world. And be that light. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was wonderful. Appreciate that. And summer days. We're in the summer days, aren't we? <laughs> it's a beautiful time of year. I'm grateful to be here with you guys, setting ourselves up for success today. And uh, I think it's important to set our intentions, decide what kind of day we're going to have. So let's do that together choose to have an amazing one and we can say prayers for those around us that need it austin you've got the prayers no problem i have a niece this weekend that is getting married a sign of celebration is a wonderful thing i can't wait to go to that she's getting married early in life because she has cancer and it seems like she doesn't have very long to live so bittersweet but we can take that this life and enjoy both sides of that bittersweet thing. It's an experience to be a part of. So I'm grateful to witness and be a part of it. Seeking joy in the face of fear. That's what we do here on Earth. So thank you very much for coming. And I appreciate that you're here. If you have anything you'd like to share about this lesson or anything else, I'd love to hear it. Thanks, everybody. Colinda, good morning. Good morning, Adriana. I was inspired by Tom's in, uh, very inspiring meditation about spiritual unfoldment. And I remember once singing um, to a new audience where I'd never sung before, and I'm a terrible singer. And I just belted out this tune uh, from The Lion King. And at the end of it, everyone clapped because they appreciated that I was so bold to try something new and daring and something that I was embarrassed to do, but courageous enough to try. Um, but this woman uh, said, with all my love, I just wanted to give you some feedback. When you're singing, don't force it out. Just let the music unfold in front of you. And I thought that was such a beautiful description of musicality and the unfoldment of our spirit. Um, so with your permission, I, I would like to sing the song to this audience uh, with an attempt to let the music unfold in front of me. Wonderful. Thank you for that gift, Linda, of course. Beautiful, thank you all. Um, so this is Can You Feel the Love Tonight? And I'm just going to sing a verse. There's a calm surrender to the rush of day When the heat of a rolling wind can be turned away An enchanted moment and it sees me through it's enough for this restless warrior just to be with you. And can you feel the love tonight? It is where we are. It's enough for this wide-eyed wanderer 
that we got this far and can you feel the love tonight how it's laid to rest it's enough to make kings and vagabonds believe the very best Thank you all. That's the second time I've sung publicly. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> that Way to go. Great. Very good. That was fantastic. Great. You're ready for Carnegie Hall. You're I all love so beautiful. It. I love you all so much. Listen, I loved it, Linda. I love that song. I love the lyrics. Oh Believe it or not, God. you brought tears to my eyes because that's one of my favorite songs. I just love that song. So thank you for sharing that. And I, like you, feel like I can't sing, but I sing anyway. <laughs> so I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Nice. What a wonderful gift. Um, Bob, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to jump on you. It's just that uh, I don't know if I said it very uh, okay, the name. I, I don't know how to read it. It's the first time that uh, that comes up. So I want to welcome him or her, because I don't know if he, if it's she or he, but welcome to your way. If you want to share with us something, the mic is yours. I just wanted to um, give an update on my progress, uh, having participated in these rooms, and there's just a visible transformation in my life. So I feel connected to the loving energy of the universe and find that I'm attracting beautiful people in my life who vibrate at the level of love and joy and just help me heal and transform and work towards redemption. So I'm not a perfect person. I'm a real person. I've done some good things and some bad things, but I strive to towards the good and just the beauty of people's forgiveness and kindness when I share my story is remarkable. And I think it's the universe reflecting back to me um, the energy that I'm putting out, that of love, acceptance and truth. Um, yes. And I have this room to thank. So thank you very much for creating this space. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. And anybody can talk. Sawe, Michael, if anybody down below would like to come up, you're all welcome. It's so great to see many of you. There was a, there was a play that I saw at um, a theater in Raleigh, North Carolina, where I live, um, years ago. It, it was at least 10 years ago. At the moment, I can't even remember the name of it. But the play was so amazing that I went back to see it about, I would think, at least four times. And the reason it was so amazing is because when I watched it the first time, there were six characters in that play and they played their parts perfectly. They each um, acted the part that they were. It was all and it, the whole thing was kind of a spoof anyway. It, it wasn't meant to be realistic, but it did carry themes and ideas. And I decided at the very end of the play that I have to come back and see it at least one more time. And the reason I decided that is because I found out there were only two actors in the entire play. There were never more than two people on stage at one time. They had um, people on the sides, so you couldn't see them. So they could walk off stage, put their hands forward, go into a new um, outfit and come right back on stage maybe mess the hair up or put a wig on it. I can't recall the specifics, but they would come out as another person. And each of the two actors played three different parts. And I did not know it the first time I saw it. And the only time I realized it is when they had the curtain call and only two people came out. It was absolutely amazing. And it fits exactly the way Tom was telling um, the narrative of, of what he did, that we're each not only actors, but 
the, we're even playing the other person's parts. We call that projecting, don't we? It's, it, we play all the parts. We learn, we learn because we can see other people as us and because other people see us as them. But this play was so fun that I went back to see it again the third time. I just wanted to, the second and third time, I wanted to see how they managed to do that. How can they do it so fast? It was like I was watching my watch, even. They'd go off stage and come back on, and they were a completely different character. And they had to change their demeanor. They had to change their, just everything about them. And it was amazing to see that happen all within probably a 45-minute play. And I, I can still remember it. And that particular theater group um, stopped I can remember performing. how amazed you were, and I can't remember the name of the play either, but I, I can yeah. remember standing in the kitchen over 5600 and uh, just <laughs> I remember, remember going on Talking about, about it. I think the, the second time you made me and mom come. Yeah, yeah, Be, because okay. it was so, it was incredible. Um, and, and that particular theater company closed their doors when COVID came. And I just saw an announcement yesterday, they've reopened their doors, which made me think once again about that. And this is, to me, it's synchronistic because, at least, <laughs> um, just because that idea became real and much more important in the way Tom characterized all of us in his fantastic meditation this morning. Um, it was a real challenge that he put in front of himself. He says, today we're going to transform everybody. It's <laughs> going to come out perfect. He didn't quite say it that way. But I was, he really got my attention and um, he carried it through because all of us, by accepting the atonement, realized that maybe we're, there's just one actor altogether in this play. And it's us. And we are already perfect and complete. The only thing we're missing is total acceptance of the reality and that truth. And there are many different acts and there are different things that happen, but it's still one actor going through and repairing the split mind. And that's what we do. Even one thing I, I'm going to add now to this, there's a place in the Bible that says something along the lines of, if you have a, doesn't say it this way, but if you have a demeaning job or a mediocre job or something, you still have to do that job as long as you have it as best as you can. And whatever you do is fine. Because the next time you'll have a chance, maybe in another position, in another place, to do something even better. And I think that spiritually, it works that way as well. Now, that was referring to how much money you make at that job, and you're only making diddly squat, as they say. But the next time, you will have more that you can handle in the next job, and you can make more money. Okay, that's, that's the physical reality of life. But that's, this also goes for the spiritual. And I think that's what Tom was again, giving us a, a peek into because we do what we can in our quote unquote real world, the day to day world that we're doing, we handle our relationships as best we can. We try not to be defensive. And when we find ourselves defensive, we remember we're not, don't want to be acting defensively. And we learn, learn, learn. Tom's favorite word. We keep learning so that the next time we're going to do it a little bit better in the next performance tomorrow night. It's going to be another performance. And those same two actors, they're going to keep coming back. And each time it gets a little bit better, more fun, more people laugh. And the world gets better one act at a time, which is exactly what Tom was saying. So I just think that all of this comes together so beautifully. Thanks for letting me share that. I'd like to jump in oh, if I may. 
Ah, uh, but okay. you know what, Janine? Let's give yep. let's give chance to show away that. I, well, I, I I'm sorry if I don't say the right word, but uh, I saw the uh, mic flashing. Um, Xiaowei, can you can you speak to us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry to welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank no, you. no, no. Don't be sorry. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, I really like this group and. Um, uh, my English is not good, <laughs> not good enough. But uh, uh, I, I just, um, uh, I just uh, uh, lis uh, listen to Tom's um, meditation, guided meditation. Uh, it's, uh, it was very, uh, very good. Um, I, I have a few questions. Um, uh, what is a miracle? Uh, uh, Tom's uh, mention. I remember Tom mentioning it's a chain of cause and effect. Uh, I I I just don't know why it's a cause, the chain of cause and effect. So what's the cause, and what's the effect? So I'm I'm a little bit confused about that. <laughs> can you exp Can you clarify yeah. the chain yeah, of cause yeah. and effect? What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, that, in time and space, it seems like we have cause and effect, that there is something that happens that results in some re result. So, uh, Course in Miracles actually says that uh, cause and effect are two sides of one coin and happen simultaneously. But uh, another definition of a miracle is, and this is the one that I you know, normally would use, is a change in perception from fear to love. So what that really would mean is any time that you decide to move out of fear and move into love and forgiveness, a miracle occurs within your mind. So a miracle is not some physical happening. There might be some, uh, relationship outside that the external world might notice but it's something that occurs within your own mind you move out of fear and you move into love and acceptance that's a miracle yeah on the big picture since there's only a oneness of all that is uh in time and space we're seeing a lot of causes for example i kick you uh you react and you slug me back or something like that and you say that the reason for that is because i kicked you first and i says well i did that because i could see that you were plotting to do something against my interests or whatever it might be so we always think in time and space we perceive it as linear which means uh, it goes from past to present to future Course of Miracles says that this world is really uh, the remembrance of a journey that's already over. This is getting kind of technical here. We've already completed everything. We've already reawakened to the truth. And what we're really doing in time and space is just looking back on that journey. So where you wish to place your attention is where it is. So on a big picture level, a miracle which is ultimately the reawakening to the truth that there is just this oneness is a series of what appear to be cause and events that led us to the reawakening of your uh, acceptance of your divine inheritance so that's why i said it's interlocking chain of cause and effects other people are having things happen in their world that's interlocking. We need each other to play the parts of that uh, play. So in your case, you look at yourself as a heroine. In my case, I come from a viewpoint that I'm not a bit player, I'm the star. Uh, but each one's playing their own roles in this bigger picture. And so that's the interlocking aspect. I kicked your 
you in the teeth, not because uh, you did something wrong, but maybe because you needed to learn that you're only love or you're lovable or that you deserve respect, whatever it might be. But you needed that experience someone else to do that so that you could help reawaken and hone that skill. So uh, we're all playing various parts in other people's plays or, you know, on, on a big picture, there's a lot of mini plots, so to speak. And you are living your story, having this interlocking chain of events, learning the learning lessons that you're that it's designed to teach you. I, by the same token, whenever I'm interacting with you, I am having those learning lessons provided for me. They might be different learning lessons, but they're all moving us forward to reawakening to the truth that you are as God created you. You are God's treasure. There is just this oneness and you are that. Ultimately, there's nobody to fix. Nobody to change, nobody to correct, nobody to protect, nobody to impress. There is nobody. God is, and you are that one. So that's, you know, that interlocking is that acceptance of that at all. I hope that helps if you need yeah, more. Yeah, it really helps. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, another, uh, another, uh, thing is uh, you mentioned about where you put your attention on. So, um, so um, a lot of time, uh, so, so, we, you, so do you mean uh, we need to put, uh, forget about the time and spa uh, space, forget about, uh, so, so the past, uh, the future is all illusion, the, 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 the everlasting time. The or the is eternal. So we whether do you mean we need to focus on our attention on the the end, which is uh, everything is perfect, uh, the, the 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 perfect love. So that's uh, what you mean, right? That, so I mean, so it, because you you in, in the uh, meditation you mentioned is a uh, by the end. Everything is perfect. Uh, it doesn't matter whether your current situation are. That's an illusion. Uh, the truth is, uh, everything is perfect. So we just uh, put a focus on our attention on the end, the the per the perfection. Uh, is that what you mean? Uh, for your meditation. Well, um... Uh, somewhat, and let me see if I can expand on that notion. Um, you're an individuated aspect of consciousness. You have been, and we have all been, the everywhere and every when in time. As Bob mentioned, we've played all the parts, all the roles. We're, we've changed costumes and learned, you know, played both sides of, of the coin, so to speak. So as individuated consciousness, you as the controller of your thoughts or your, uh, you know, I shouldn't use thoughts, they come and go, but as the person that wants to focus on them and perhaps judge them, okay? What you place your attention on is where your mind goes. So uh, you are the keeper of your attention, what you want to focus on. In time and space, which is created on a, I use the word mass collective conscious basis, we don't have 100% liberty of choice. Liberty of choice would allow us to be able to choose from all possibilities as to how we want to respond. In time and space, what we have is limited options 
uh, you know, I've got a gun that I'm holding to your head and I say, do this or that, you have limited choices at how you are going to respond to uh, that unfolding, those circumstances that are thrown your way. But although you don't have liberty of choice, 100% liberty, you've got to make a decision based on the options available to you. They might all be bad options, but you do have 100% control on your decision as to how you're going to respond to that. Have 100% control of your interpretation that you choose to give the event. So you get to decide how you're going to respond. You get to decide what principles you have chosen to be your self identity at that moment in time that you are going to choose to follow and how to live and demonstrate those principles in the circumstances that confront you. And based on your response, uh, we're going to be able to gather feedback uh, so that we can look and say, how did we really respond? I said that in this situation, I would respond this way and I'd respond perhaps in a loving way. And what I actually did was I, whatever you kick me, I punched you. Okay. That is just a learning lesson. That's a chain of these cause and effect situations that help us hone our skills to realize that maybe I didn't, you know, I said I was a loving person and maybe I got caught up in the drama. I thought that I was really hurt, that I was the body. I mistook, mistook an actor in the roles that we were playing for the truth of what I really was. So I learn and gather the feedback so that I can next time make some mid-course corrections so that I can hone those skills and next time, perhaps I'll perform differently. Perhaps because, and, and we're always performing based on the level of our, our fear, how well, well we can control our fear. Next time, maybe I'll just cuss at you. Okay, that uh, will be a more loving way. And because of those past experiences, I improve. If, if you want to say, or I have more options open to me. So whenever I go within and have that set of circumstances uh, confront me 20 years later or whatever, I have more options as to how I'm really going to respond to that. And I ask, what would the Holy Spirit have me do? And the Holy Spirit will always meet you where you are and have you act in the most loving way that your fears will allow, which is all part of that interlocking chain of cause and effects that gets us to, quote unquote, the promised land, not the truth of what we really are. I hope that helps. Jawe, um, yeah. well, go ahead. Tell me what you think about what Tom said, and then I'm, I'd like to add something. To I think that's a really, uh, that really helps. It really answer my uh, my question and also when you, when Tom to, uh, explain, I think about my past experience. Yeah, just like what Tom said. Uh, sometimes I think I'm a loving person. I, but sometimes I just uh, when when someone did something wrong, I just really get upset and get offended, and uh, then after that, I feel regret. <laughs> so I think that's a living. That's a really a learning experience. So you you know what you should do, but but sometimes you just did something opposite. But you, just like what you said, you you have a, when when facing that situation, you know you have more options. Yeah, and have a Holy Spirit as Holy Spirit, which. Uh, 
what Holy Spirit ha have me to do. What, yeah, that's that's a that's a very very uh, very good, very helpful, and also, uh, you, I think we every day we face uh, we are facing the decision making. Uh, sometimes uh, I just you know. Um, that's a lot, relate a lot to do with uh, uh, decision making. So that's a very good question. As uh, uh, because uh, I think in, in decision making is a uh, it's a between fear and the love. So that's a very good question to ask. Where uh, what's a love have me to do in, in decision making? So. Uh, invite Holy Spirit in our daily decision making. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to add something if I could, you know, you said that sometimes you look back and you feel regret. Um, that's fine, but what that feeling is, is really just a realization that you're starting to learn your lesson that it wasn't the right appropriate action to take. But remember that uh, miracles are an interlocking chain of cause and effect, which means that you know, you're looking at it from your perspective, from the big picture level, that other person that you responded to in what you now perceive as a non-loving way, you were being an actor or a teacher or someone helping them learn their own perfect lesson. And so someone, whether it was you or me, had to fill that role so that they, as a learner, were all learners, could learn that uh, lesson that that experience was designed to teach them from their perspective. So there's really no blame, shame, or guilt. We mentioned earlier that we've all played all the parts. And whenever we realize that we're just playing parts, we can lighten up on ourselves and our brothers and sisters and other actors and cut them some slack and realize that if it doesn't appear perfect now, we haven't reached the final act. But know that in the end, the truth is that person that kicked you in the teeth was really just an actor reawakening to the truth of who they really are. And that by playing each of us, playing our own roles, we move to that realization so it's ultimately all you know we have to play all those parts so there's no blame shame or guilt and if we have that that's just telling us that we think we could do better the next time around maybe we'd like to uh live what we think is our principles rather than uh not walk our talk and to, to live that. And that's what ultimately we have. When the world throws us crap, we have to make a decision how we're going to respond to that. And it's whatever we do, we're on the big picture level on that perfect path. It's all going to be perfect in the end. And we, you know, can do that whenever we want. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That's a very, uh, a uh, very good perspective to see things differently. Yeah. So I uh, just follow that. Uh, follow uh, what you said. I wonder whether we can re redo the past. Uh, if, for example, sometimes I feel like I I should do it better. Can I redo the past by what I focus on? Because sometimes I just really feel, oh, I shouldn't get offended. I shouldn't react to, you know, re reacting like a attacking to, like attacking thoughts. So that, that, that's an excellent question. 
uh, in regards to this journey that's already over. Oh, okay. Um, if we look at history, the idea that on June, whatever today is, the 24th or 3rd, I don't know what it is, uh, 2022, I kicked you in the teeth. That on time and space, that actually did occur in this dimension of time and space. It may have been uh, a acting, but it actually did occur. If everybody was in the audience, if Bob was in the audience, he could testify that Tom kicked that person in the teeth at you know this moment in time. What we have the ability to do is to reframe or change the purpose of how we view those things. So rather than me looking at the past and saying, boy, I was a failure, I was a real jerk, I realized that, that I'm a learner. And therefore, that was the perfect experience that I needed so that I could 20 years from now respond in that similar situation in a more loving way. And so I can lighten up and I can I can't change what happened, but I can change how I view that and I can also do that same thing for you. You can look at Tom and say, you know, he really kicked me in the teeth. But whenever I say to myself, what would I have to believe about myself to call into my awareness that experience that I had 20 years ago getting kicked in the teeth by this SOB? And you go and you say, oh, you know, I was, he was trying to help me on the big picture, learn that I deserve respect, that even this game token deserves some respect in that that's not how you should act. And now you have reframed the purpose. So now you've realized that we're all actors and rather than hold a grievance for me kicking you in the teeth, you realize that, uh, and Course in Miracles is going to say that forgiveness is the realization that I forgive my, I forgive Tom for kicking me in the teeth because I forgive him for the things that I thought occurred that never really happened. I thought he was doing this with malice. I thought he was doing this to uh, hurt me. Now I realize that what he was really doing on a big picture level was helping me reawaken to the truth. So now I need to thank him, so to speak, for playing his role so effectively that I got caught up in the drama, got sucked in by it, and actually believed that I could be hurt, that I was the body, that something outside of me could cause me to lose my inner peace. And therefore, he was my teacher. He was somebody that on the, if we looked at it uh, kind of as a play, we had a script that we wanted to experience. We had a uh, casting uh, and we said, here's the various roles. And Tom got casted in that role. It wasn't him that was really kicking me he, that was the costume and therefore I will not think of him as I will not see him as the performance I'll see him as someone that was acting that was just doing his part and therefore there's nothing to forgive everybody was just doing their roles on that own perfect path and if anything uh, when we get over, we're all kind of get together at the uh, end of the play and join in our party and laugh at the various roles that we play to help us all reawaken to the truth. 
Um, Jarway, I just wanted to say that um, you are in the room where we study a book called A Course in Miracles. Your very first question was, what exactly is a miracle? Which Tom had, had talked about, and you wanted to get some more clarity on it. Keep coming back. <laughs> there are actually 50 um, different ways of understanding miracles. And they're all explained in the first chapter of the book. And we've been studying that for quite some time. We're going to continue. Um, Lee is my son that you see in this um, on the people here. Linda happens to be my daughter who's joined us this morning. Glad to see you. And um, in, in the early part of the book, you find many different ways of understanding what a miracle is. A Course in Miracles is basically to explain to us that if we can clean up the mess that we're carrying around in our head, the mess that Tom describes as guilt and shame and fear and some couple of other things that could be in there too, they go away and we become a better, nicer, happier person that we enjoy being. In other words, it's kind of like an actor getting to play a hero for once instead of always ending up feeling that they were the bad guy in the play. And that's just one way of looking at miracles. <clears throat> and that's what that's the direction that all of us are going. And that's why we come and we think and we talk about it. Um, I'd like to see if anyone else has something to add in, in that particular vein, maybe a miracle, something like that. They happen all wow. the time. And um, the only thing we have to do is learn what they're really about. And we'll realize we're in the middle of a bunch of miracles every day. Adrienne. Yeah, I have, I have, I have an example. For example, <laughs> well, today, today lesson, uh, besides God is but love and therefore so am I. It's I give the miracles I have received and I am at home and fear is the stranger here. And it's really amazing how my life unfolds, uh, particularly uh, experiences uh, the day before, because then when I start the morning with all of you and I see these titles in these lessons, I can make connections with what I experienced yesterday. Um, a good example uh, for uh, for this kind of uh, uh, yeah concept of miracles that is uh, changing perception came came to me yesterday from a mom in my daughter's school. There's a little girl in my daughter's class in my daughter's class that has um, that has some kind of disability with the, with with her communication skills. So she's not so uh, so advanced in words and 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 her talking it's also a little bit slower slowly than slower than the other kids so she had really she had really more of a challenge to communicate in the regular way so what this little girl does is that when she wants to cut her friend's attention she starts to do mean things for in the perspective of other kids so she starts to like grab them too hard or push them or doing like uh, um, things like uh, taking away their their school uh, their school things and um, and hide them from them she starts to do like things to cut that attention so this little girl has been in my daughter's class uh, several from several years ago. I mean, I know that little girl since she was a baby, probably. And her mom was uh, a little bit afraid of telling us that she had that, that issue. But when the mom told us, then we all as a group started to understand the dynamics and we start to really put in perspective our, our own children in order to have this little girl be more understood in the in their day-to-day -day basics but you know uh, as years go by, goes by and new moms go uh, when, uh, coming into the class and all those things this information doesn't like uh, update with the group so yesterday I experienced this kind of switch in perception there there is a mom that has uh, two uh, that that has twins in our classroom 
and the twins have uh, have her have their birthday uh, in this week, and the, the the mom planned a party for them tomorrow, but she didn't wanted to invite. The, I mean, the the girls didn't want to invite uh, this little girl because she was being mean to them, and the little girls were having really a hard time at school. Um, because of that, and the mom uh, has been in talk with the school, trying to figure out things and, and uh, uh, with the help of the teachers, but she never found like a good resolution to it. And the girls uh, kept uh, complaining about this little girl. So the girl wasn't invited. So when the mom sent the invitation to everybody else, she did it like in a private way and asked us to not uh, talk about the party like openly in the chat of the group. And that was it. But yesterday, the mom did something in the group that may that may like uh, open the idea that the party was going to be tomorrow. So I asked her because when she invited my daughter, I told her, "But why is that? Who is not invited?" And then she told me about the experience, and I told her, "You know what? My daughter had the same kind of uh, conflict with this little girl." And I don't know if you knew that she has this kind of uh, disabilities and whatever. And when I when I talked to Vera uh, in that in that understanding, without putting the other little girl like a, like a poor little girl, but just uh, giving her giving Vera, my daughter, the idea that we communicate different than her, and therefore we have to. If you are not hearing me, please let me know because I'm having issues here with the internet. Um, okay, great. Thank you both. Um, then the, uh, the mind of Be my daughter's mind started to, ah, okay. So I started to say to her, you know what, baby? This little girl have uh, challenges with words. So if she likes you, she probably would not, will, wouldn't know how to express it differently than, the, than using her body, her strength and her body, because she cannot get her words out in the same way than you. So tell me what is the most annoying thing that she does to you, and let's try to find out if that comes from a really not want to play with you kind of thing, or, or if is probably that she wants to play with you and she's trying to get your attention. And then we start to talk about the specifics and she, my daughter, by herself realized that, yeah, it was that this little girl wanted to play and as everybody else was uh, putting her aside, but Vera always talks to her, she was going after Vera in that way because she wanted to play with them. So Vera started to change her perception and then what happened is that Lee, I, I found always uh, the following in the following days, I found that this little girl sent love letters to my daughter with hearts and, uh, and you're my best friend. And I was, oh, my God, that happened with my daughter. But with this particular party that is going tomorrow, that is happening tomorrow and ha that the older mom just like opened the, the information. I talked to the mom and I said, well, what happened is it, it wasn't. It wasn't that that somebody wasn't invited, and she said, "You know what? After I talked to you, um, we started to talk with the girls and trying to understand deeply the dynamics, as you said. And my husband has been trying to uh, get, get gave them uh, more tools uh, in order for them to approach different the situation with the girl." Uh, without the intervention of the teachers for them to, uh, again, uh, as well, stand up when they are not comfortable in a, in a situation, but in a peaceful way. And what has been happening is that the girls really took this other little girl and talked to them, to her, in a, in a peaceful way and explained to her that they didn't want that kind of interaction because for them was really, um, yeah, like uh, annoying. Annoying, and they explained to the little girl that she needs to behave better because otherwise nobody else will want to play with her. And the little girl listened to these other two girls, and she started to behave properly. And in in this week, activities at school, uh, the two little girls that are having the party are now welcoming their her friend into the party. So the mom has been invited to the party. So there's no any more secrecy about that. 
And this mom was so thrilled to have that switch in the kid's perception that she felt relieved. Everything that comes from separation will create conflict. So for me, it was like, wow, it's really amazing because I did, I, I just shared my experience with my daughter and, and this other little girl to this mom and this mom gave it a chance to be more open. And I can understand her position because she was really mad at, uh, at this entire situation because she wanted, as a mom, that their daughters had a great experience at school and they were having this conflict. But when you open your mind to wider perspectives and not get attached to one single part of the evidence, you can find ways to, be, to, uh, to approach differently a conflict situation and that's when miracles happen for me this was a huge miracle because this little girl with those challenges doesn't need to be excluded she needs to be understood and give, and, the, and she needs to have a chance to do better in life and she has the tool if we all around her gave her the information properly or gave her the, the yeah the, the hints to do better in life so for me, it was a huge miracle. And, I, and it's a good example of how you can give the miracles that you have received. Because for me, it was also so great to see the other little girl sending uh, love letters to my daughter when my daughter understood what was going on with her. For me, this is how miracles works, how you change your perspective on a thing that seems to be a conflict without any solution from your side. And it all has to be, I mean, it all has to do with the mind, with how the mind can just get attached to one single thing and don't, and don't give room to any, any other kind of perception. And that is when the conflicts arise. Nothing is fixed in matter, nothing. No matter if you are uh, diagnosed uh, with anything, nothing is fixed, is fixed in matter, the only true thing is love so god is but love and therefore so am i everything that you share with love will result in miracles in some form because it's it's opening the gateways to the energy to flow in in, in the in the joining uh understand i mean you need to understand that everything is part of oneness so every activity every every Conflict is part of a separation idea, so everything needs to be needs to be driven towards uh, inclusion, towards acceptance, towards uh, not trying to have everybody as the same thing because we are all unique. But is the really um, is the is finding the way for you to um, like appreciate the uniqueness that everybody is in order for you to feel that everything is okay. So that is how, uh, an, 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 example that I, an example that I wanted to share about the miracles uh, part of it. And I am at home and Phil is a stranger here. I also had a call with an aunt yesterday and she, she is in, an, in her elder years and she was um, almost crying about her about her fear to feel like yeah, that that she need help in some form, and her, on her the daughters and uh, but the, yeah, the, their sons wasn't so like uh, like helping to her, helping her whatever. And I started to say to her, well, if you don't get the answer outside, the only answer that you can try now is go within yourself and try to ask God to help you, but not with the sense that He's too busy and you are not worthy. Because then you are taking his uh, relationship uh, to you as daughter. So you need to go to God as you are his daughter and ask him for help and let the miracles happen because there's no other way around it. And she felt relief too. And, and I could clear, clearly see that the ideas that I shared with her, with her yesterday gave her peace. So... I am at home, fear is the stranger here. Every time that you get the chance to remove a little bit of your fear or anybody else's fear, putting their minds and your mind just towards God as the source of everything without any kind of um, 
inferior, inferiority, you will see the release of, uh, of the worry of the angst in, in, in you and in other persons. I wanted to share those if it's worth for the examples. Thank you very much. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning, special to my daddy, to my brother, to Adriana and everyone in the room. I will listen, listening to all of the miracle. Talk about miracle. I um, to want to share a little bit quick. Um, miracle is not come in just miracle only that's that's my that's what i'm thinking you know that's me i i do believe prayer bless miracle will happen um like me example i do believe you know, most of people in this room know that I just found my father, Bob and John, for after 50 years. And when I grow up, I always believe I will find my father one day. And when you believe it, you will pray for it. You know, you have to believe first. If you don't believe it, you don't pray, you don't think about it, miracle not going to happen. Miracle not just stop by your house and, hey, you know, I, I don't think so. And that's, that's just what I'm thinking, okay? I may be wrong, but that's me. I believe that I want to follow my father one day, and I did, and I worked hard for that. I believe, I pray, and I work for it. I found my father so many times, five times, and I feel like I got blessed. And miracles always happen, so I found my father last year. This is talk about miracles. Um, of course, you know, sometimes anything has happened to you, it may be like Tom said earlier, maybe something about, um, why that happened to me? Why somebody kicking my teeth, you know, why something like that? And why didn't why that? But in the later time you figure it out you say oh okay well thanks to him because of this because of that and um there's somebody hurt me in my life you know when i grown up and something like that but i always thanks to him that i have i become what i am today yeah that's happened like that too um you know jesus he died before he died. He's suffering. Like people throw rock on him, they whip him, they do all kind of stuff, you know. And he take all that. And I think we are human. Of course, life is not easy. You have to go through a lot of stuff. So I always look into a positive side. Uh, the week of uh, Lent, you know, six weeks Lent. I'm Catholic, so. The week of Lent, you know, you have to give up this and give up that just because you want to think about it, you know, what Jesus do for you. And um, coffee is my thing. Coffee, I have to drink it every day. But I did give up six-week coffee because I'm thinking, you know, I have to do something. And then I was trim my tree, my bushes in front of the house. Somehow I cut the blade. It's windy. It's really very windy that day, and then I already cut it off, but the blade is not stopped right away, and it cut into my hand, and I got, it's not cut the whole finger off, you know, but it got four cut, five cut of my hand, and um, I got bleeding really bad, and I, I, I think very positive right then, you know, like, everybody, oh my God, you know, why you do this and that? You cut your hand and you're okay? Of course, you know, it's not okay. It's, it's bleeding. It's hurt, terrible. But I think in a different way. First of all, I think, I say, well, you know, this week is Jesus lost 
a lot of blood. So I lost just a few drops. That's fine. I think of that. And I'm like, well, thank God my finger is still here. You know, it's still there. And I said another thing. Well, thank God, you know, it's, it's healed. It's all right. I'm still working. My nerve's still there. I'm still moving. I'm still working. So I always think positive. If anything happened to me, I think positive. I got a car accident and I'm still alive. Like, oh, thank God I'm still alive. You know, I don't think, oh my God, I'm terrible today. I got a car accident and, you know, things happen like that. I always think in a positive side, you know, if it's, it's, I got COVID, but thank God I'm still alive. I'm still sitting here and talking to you guys, you know, something like that. Anything happened to me in my life, I always think in that, you know, it's just a lesson. And I'm, I'm, I make mistakes and I believe everybody makes mistakes. And mistake is always mistake. But if you learn from it, it's a lesson. And I learned so much in my life for 51 years old. I feel like I believe and I pray, I got blessed and I found my father today. That's a miracle. I found my brother. I be here, live here in America. It's a big miracle for me. So uh, that's all I want to share about miracle uh, with everyone here in the room. Thank you. And I hope everyone have a good day. Linda, I, I have to <laughs> I have to tell you a new insight that I got this week on the miracle that we share, that you also met Lee and, and he's a brother that you didn't have as you were growing up and you are his sister that he didn't have when he was growing up. You were both both times you were single um, siblings. But I also found another coincidence which is meaningful to me and anybody else who chooses to call it meaningful and that is that the day that you came to see me which was I would think that I think the video of that um, showed at least three or four times on different um, Facebook pages was on Juneteenth June 19th and it was on that day that you first you were able to touch me and, and and we were together we could hug and so on and juneteenth also is the day in texas where you live now houston but not in the same town <laughs> where the last remnants of slavery were stopped there was no more slavery after that day and they've been celebrating black people for the most part have been celebrating this for many years um but for me in a way you spent your life earnestly looking for me and i was not able to communicate with you because i didn't know um, your new name and so it was all on you to find me and you were persistent and out of the five times that you thought you found me the fifth time really worked and then you found me and it you you've blessed my life in so many ways i couldn't begin to to uh put it together but the idea of the last day of slavery is the same day that you now found the one thing you've been looking well not but at least one of the one things that you were looking for in earnest and it was such an amazing blessing to my family so i just wanted to to um, put that in because that's it just makes the the miracle even of us coming back together after all these years um so much more special thanks I second it. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have you in my life, Linda. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. I think we've we've uh, come up on our almost two hour mark now. I hope you got a little bit out of the lesson and uh, another sense of how miracles abound if we adjust our vision in the right direction, open ourselves up to let the Holy Spirit guide us. 
certainly feel like I'm working my tushy off trying to do that in my own life and it's paying dividends. So I hope it's working for you. Thank you for joining us. If anybody who wants to talk, you can still talk. I'm not closing. Just wanted to give you guys a moment. And everybody down below is welcome to Sans. It's great to see you. Hey, Darcy and Marianne. And Austin, I hope you're doing well today, sir. And I'm going to have to go get to work pretty soon, too. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the streams. But uh, I'm going to have to close the room. Have a wonderful day, everybody.